Welcome to One Church. We're so glad that you're joining us today. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, and no matter what's been done to you, Jesus loves you. You have a place here with us at One Church, and you have a place in God's kingdom. If this is your first time joining us, let me just say a very special welcome. I hope you stick around. I know God has something special for you today. We'd love a chance to connect with you. Would you take a second, scan the QR code, or head to our website, church.one. From there, you can fill out our Connect card. It helps us to know a little bit more about who you are and how we can be praying for you. It's also a great way to take a next step with Jesus. So go ahead and take a next step with Jesus today. Take a second and do that now. Life is better together. Are you looking to connect with others and with God on a deeper level? Well, head to our website, church.one slash groups. You can check out our groups catalog and sign up today. We want to reach the most people in the shortest time, and our YouTube channel is one of the ways that we've been doing that. Thank you so much for helping us to grow that. Head to our YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe, like, and turn the notifications bell on to stay caught up with everything we have going on at One Church. Go ahead and do that now. Here at One Church, we pray for one person to share God's love with every day. It's a simple prayer. God hears it and he answers it. You know, one way you could share God's love with somebody right now is to share the service link with them. So whoever God puts on your heart right now, go ahead and share that with them. One of the most important truths of our Christian faith is the resurrection of Jesus from the tomb on the third day. Each time that we gather together, we take time to remember what Jesus did with his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And we share in a time of communion together. So gather what you'll need and be ready to do that. God has given us everything we need for life and for happiness. And he's given us everything we need in Jesus for our salvation. Freely we receive and freely we give it all back to him. Would you like to take a second now and give? Here are a few ways that you can do that throughout our service. And thank you so much for your continued generosity. We're continuing in our message series called Believe, and today's message is titled, God Doesn't Care How Much I Give. Well, Bo's gonna unpack that, but before we hear from him, we're gonna have a time of worship together. So let me just encourage you and invite you to give it all to Jesus right now, to the King.
Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Yes, you do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the power that's in your love to transform lives. You change our hearts, you change our lives, and in return, we offer them to you. Hey, today is a great day to take a next step with Jesus. You know, today is the day of salvation. Scan the QR code, head to our website. You can fill out our connect card and somebody will connect back with you. Here at One Church, we love to celebrate five awesome things that God is doing in the life of our church. And Ariana is gonna share those with us right now. 
Up at number five, a team of people from One Church and outreach partner Mission Life returned from Nicaragua this past weekend. On this trip, they spent time sharing the gospel, serving with feeding programs, building homes, visiting prisons, and so much more. High five, guys, to sharing God's love all over the world. Up at number four, in October, our outpost collected warm clothing for those in need in our local communities. Now, in November, we've collected food in partnership with local organizations who are helping to provide everything needed for Thanksgiving dinners. Hundreds of bags full of Thanksgiving meals are going out this week to these local friends. A huge high five goes out to everyone who helped make this Thanksgiving special for so many families. Here at number three, our hurricane relief team of volunteers from One Church just returned from Fort Myers, Florida after an awesome week of sharing God's love and helping people recover from the damages there. High five to that relief team. Way to go, guys. We're so thankful for the ones that God brought along your way. Up at number two, we're celebrating Kai and how God is moving in his life. Recently, he was baptized at our Bedford outpost and it was a beautiful celebration of his faith in Jesus. Way to go, Kai. This high five goes out to you today. And finally, up at number one, Haley attended our Manchester Outpost Sunday and found herself ready to respond to what God was calling her to do and be baptized. Haley claims the truth that her identity is in Christ and we're all celebrating that with her today. High five, Haley. Thanks for joining us for our high five and I can't wait to celebrate with you in the next one. Before this building, there were people in the land yearning for, to hear, to go to a house and hear the Word of God. We did that here. Now we do it in all these places and people go. People go and they feel blessed. A, a Christian friend of mine, she approached me and she said one day, Marissa, you're very blessed, but do you tie an offer? And I said, no, I don't do that. And she says, why not? But I wanted that for myself. That's mine. You know, it's between me and God. And I, and I think he's okay with that, I'm not tired of And she says, no, Mauricio, the Lord says here, test me on this. So she says, test the Lord on this. Be obedient, test him. So I, I had to talk to the Lord. I said, Father, only because you're giving me permission, I'm gonna put you to the test. The blessings that started to pour on me, my home, my work, my family, when you start being obedient with the tithes and offerings, you will know the difference. My giving is part of other people's life in a good way because now my giving, they're gonna be able to go to church on Sunday and they faithfully go and they happily go and they bring their children. <laughs> Woohoo! yeah! Oh, I love that. I, lo I love hearing uh, people's stories about generosity and how God is moving in their hearts and transforming and changing us because this is like real power. Like, like we know the power of God to save us. I mean, just think about that for a moment. We know the power of God to save us, that, that what we were, we're not anymore. That we were sinners, but now we're saints. That we've been made new. And God has done this work in us. We're not doing it. He did that work in us. He transforms and changes us at the core of our being. And we know he has power and authority to do that, right? We're going to get a woohoo for that. That's a woohoo thing because we know that we believe that to be true. And it is true. But it gets so much better than that. Not only can God save us and redeem us and transform us, but out of that transformed heart comes transformed living, comes transformed thinking, a new worldview, a new way that we navigate the world that we're living in and experience uh, life in our worlds. And so as we're praying for one and sharing God's love with our ones, he provides so many opportunities for us to experience his love moving through us. And one of those ways is through generous giving. And this is nothing new, by the way. There is a rich, and I do mean rich, heritage and history of people giving generously to the Lord so that we can be a part of what God's doing right now. 
I mean a rich history and heritage. This all didn't just happen on accident. It wasn't like one church just magically appeared one day. It wasn't like it came out of the heavens and fell to the earth. No, God used people to do this because the church is people. And so we have buildings that we can gather in, that we call outposts. We also have the ability uh, to, to put our, our messages and our worship services online to reach the most people in the shortest time, right where people are. And God is making himself known more than ever before, and people are responding, and we're a part of that. If you're able to hear this message and experience this worship service today, it is because God has moved through the generosity of other people in the past. And that is worth noting and celebrating. And it's also worth noting and celebrating that we get to do it now. We get to be a part of that now. We have stepped into it, and now we get to be a part of that. And there will be others in the future who will be woohooing because of your faithful generosity and giving, and because God did an amazing work in you and transformed you. Now that's the truth, and that's the truth we're celebrating. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. We're in this message series called Believe, where we're addressing some of the most common lies that people believe about God and money and the church. And so right in the middle of the word believe is the word lie. And when you choose to believe a lie, it's a lot of work. I mean, it takes a lot of work to support a lie. And we, we go to work at it. And as we work at it, that, that also it really begins to erode and impact our identity. And it bleeds over into every aspect of our lives. And so we want to call this out. We want to find the truth of God. And so our memory verse is found in Romans chapter 1, verse 25. And wherever you are, I hope you will read this out loud. And I hope you can do it with a smile on your face because these are God's words that are for you. So let's read this together. It says, they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. This has been the pattern of people throughout the history of the world. We need to worship. We are made and designed to worship. We know that we cannot possibly be the pinnacle and the ultimate. And so we've got to escape self and exalt something or someone. And sometimes we worship people. Sometimes we worship things. But all of those are created. Even if we were to, to worship creation, and, and creation is beautiful, the ocean and, and the hills and the mountains and the streams and the valleys and the deserts, his, his creation is magnificent and beautiful. But instead of worshiping created things, we have the opportunity to worship the creator and to give glory to him and to exalt him. And this is ultimately what every human being is longing for. We were created by God to be in a relationship with God. And when you're in a relationship with God, you begin to know him. And as you know him, you see that he is worthy of worship to be exalted and trusted above all created things. And this is our truth. He is to be forever praised. And so we want to praise him now because now is part of forever forever praised. And as we praise him today and give him glory today in our worship, exalting him above all created things, there will be others in the future who praise God because of you. And that is what we're a part of. And so the lie we're addressing uh, today is this, the lie is that God doesn't care how much I give. This is a pretty common one and it's, it's tempting to believe it. Like God doesn't really care how much I give. But let's talk about God for a moment. One of the things we know about God is that God is a loving father. And as a loving father, we are his children. And as a loving father, he certainly cares about every aspect of our lives. There's no part of our lives where he's like, I don't really care about that one. You just go ahead and do whatever you want with that one. No, a loving father cares about every aspect and every element of our lives. And this includes how we handle money. And so God provides us with everything. He is the provider. Now, what we can do is if we neglect that, like if we start right there with a lie and go, no, 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 God didn't provide this. I earned this. I mean, yeah, you had a job, but who provided the job? I mean, who provided the, the body that you have? I mean, this, these, these bodies are incredible. I mean, we talk about stewardship and what we're responsible for. Our bodies are really the first area of stewardship that we're responsible for. And he entrusts these bodies to us. They're a gift from God. So the body that you have to go out and work to earn money, he gave that to you. 
He is the provider in all ways and all things. And so even when we talk about God and money, I mean, I want you to understand it's all his. So there's none of this nonsense. Like when we talk about the tithe, and I'm happy to talk about it because I love the tithe. But when we talk about the tithe, it's not this nonsense. Oh, all God's asking for is 10%. You give him 10%, you can do whatever you want with the other 90. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's not Jesus. That's not God. That's not lordship. That's not what we're talking about at all. No, it's all his. It all belongs to him. And as such, as Lord, if we exalt him and we believe and he is forever praised, as we exalt him, then we trust him. And when he tells us to give, we give. When he tells us to spend, we spend. When he tells us to save, we save. But we listen to him. We pay attention to him. God, what do you want me to do? Because he is Lord. He is calling the shots and it's all his. And so the tithe, when he, when he invites us into this beautiful, um, this beautiful gift that he gives us in tithing, he invites us into that to take the first fruits 10% and to say, okay, God, I do believe you because he knows our hearts and he knows what we need. I do believe you. And as a part of that, I'm going to go ahead and give you right off the top before anything else, not the leftovers, but before anything else, I'm going to start here. It's not the end. I'm going to start here. And I'm going to start at 10%. And then as you provide opportunities, then I'm going to keep stepping into generosity because I've already taken the first step with the first 10%. And so now I, I, I'm testing God in this. I'm going to test you in this, God. Is this real? Are you serious about this? What does it mean to walk in blessing? To be blessed means to be happy. To be blessed means to be happy. And more money does not mean more happiness, by the way. To be, to be blessed means to be happy, to walk with the Lord in the life that he has for us, to have his generosity move through us and impact other people. And so the, when we think about does, does God care how much we give? He absolutely does because he cares about us. He loves us and he knows how important this is to us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, it says this, Remember this. So pay attention. We're supposed to remember this. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Oh, yes, Lord. Love this text. Remember this. Remember this. At one church, we pray for one. God, please give me one person to share your love with. Can we pray that together wherever you are? Let's pray it. God, please give me one person to share your love with. Now, we are believing that God's love comes into us and moves through us. And our God is a generous God. He lavishes his love on us. He pours it in. In fact, his love is limitless. Once we're connected to God, God is love. And so we have this limitless supply of love that is welling up into us to a measure of all fullness, where his love comes out of our mouths and out of our actions and out of our thoughts. He transforms and changes us. And so his generosity in his love fills us. This is who he is. And so what we want and what we believe is that we want to reach the most people in the shortest time. Because we know that time matters. Time absolutely matters. And we know that God wants to save the world. And when we talk about saving the world, I mean your world, your home, your neighborhood, your community, your workplace and school. God is massive, uh, passionately uh, desires to save your world. And his plan, plan A, is you. Now you can question him on that if you like. I certainly have. Like, dude, there's got to be somebody better than me. And he's like, it's not about you. It's about him in me. And so where we are weak, he is strong. When we don't have enough, he has everything. When we don't know what to do, he knows it all. And he is in us and he has placed us in his world. And so remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. It's just like a, it's basic common knowledge. Like if you want a big harvest, you've got to scatter a lot of seed. 
And, and this is like no bait and switch here. You guys know what we're about at One Church. We want a big harvest. The most people in the shortest time. And so we want to plant a lot of seed. We want more outposts. I mean, right now we have six outposts and we have a plan to double that. We have 12 outposts and no shocker here. What's going to happen when we have 12? We're going to have a plan to double. And we're going to want 24 and 48 and 96 until the whole world knows. And, and the reason for that is because we are in on what God's doing. We are his church and this is his mission. And we have stepped into a rich heritage of generosity. And now it's our season. And in this season, we're going to throw a lot of seed. Because we want a big harvest. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give. There's no arm twisting here. This isn't a beat down. This is good news. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. This is, this is good news. I believe this with all my heart. This is good news. It is good and it's new for a lot of people. God is for you, not against you. And when it comes to giving, this is really good news. He's inviting you to experience him in every aspect of your life and to be a part of what he's doing. And so that's why we encourage you to ask God, God, show me what to give and give me courage to give it. There's a novel approach. Ask him. Or unless you're scared, yeah, even if you are scared, ask him. Because, you know, the, that's the problem. Like the, the fear can stop us from asking God, but then the fear gets exacerbated and it gets worse. And the next thing you know, the fear is ruling over us and defining us and it's trickling in every aspect of our lives and there's never enough and, and it's always scarcity mindset and we're not tapped into the abundance of God and what he's doing. And then we're like running from God. And then when there is a financial issue, we don't even think about going to him because we know we never even talked to him about it before. So let's ask him, God, show me what to give and give me courage to give it. Can you just pray that prayer right now? God, show me what to give. And give me courage to give it. You'll hear from him. And so each of us should decide. We should give what we've decided in our hearts to give. That's why I love the online giving tool. This thing is a game changer. It's such a blessing to go in and say, I've made a decision. And I'm going to trust God in this. And to set up the giving. And follow him in that. And follow up on what he's laid on our hearts. Incredible. 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 So each of us, this is for everyone, by the way, all of us get to be a part of this. It, not like I'm going to say, oh, giving's only for some people. You other people, don't worry about it. That also is a lie. I had that said to me when my wife and I were first married and new in ministry. And, and they, they knew, they said these words, we know we don't pay you enough, so you don't have to give. I mean, and you know what? And I, I liked what I heard. I was like, that's right, you don't pay me enough. <laughs> I mean, that's what we all do, right? Like everybody's like, they don't pay me what I'm worth. You're right. There's no amount of money that could ever get close to being what you're worth. Ever. You're not paid or compensated what you're worth. You're a child of God, holy and dearly loved, saved by Jesus laying down his life for you. And giving is it's for you. No matter who you are. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Abound. I've ne I promise you, I've never had an issue believing that God would give me everything I need to do everything he's called me to do. I've never had an issue with that. I've had lots of issues knowing that God wouldn't give me everything I want. That's what it's always come down to. There's a lot of things I want that are really bad for me. There's a lot of things I've wanted that would have destroyed my family. There's a lot of things... I've wanted that would have hurt other people. And I'm so thankful that his love is so good that when we trust him, we know that in all things at all times, we will abound in every good work. He will give us everything we need to do, everything he's called us to do. And so giving matters. Very simply, God does care how much you give and it matters. It matters to you. 
You care about it. You think about it. All of us are giving a percentage of our income. Every single person gives a percentage of their income to the Lord. It's somewhere between zero and 100%. But it's still a percent. My question to you is, do you know the percent? It's just math. You can take a look at, and I don't mean what you lied about on your taxes last year. I mean the real number. Take a look at the real number. Compare it to the income that came in. What percentage was it? Take a look. The average for generosity for people is 1%. That's where most people come in. And these are people who who want to be generous. There's generosity inside of us that's looking for a way to come out. We just don't know how to do it. That's why we need a plan. That's why we should give what we've decided in our hearts to give. And we should make a plan and, and follow through with that plan. And so what's the percentage? Like, where are you now? And what percentage is God laying on your heart? It matters to us. It matters to God. Since it matters to you and me, the church, we are the church, then it matters to God. He cares. That's why he'll answer that prayer. That's why he tells us to test him in this. See what he'll do. Experience life in this way with him. It matters to the church, us as a community. This rich heritage of generosity that we're a part of. Not only did this not happen on accident, it doesn't continue on accident either. We have electric bills. Oh, wait, this is the other thing. I've heard people say, I don't want to give to pay the electric bill. I'm like, I do. Because God uses electricity to reach a lot of people. He uses that. I'm happy to pay the electric bill. And so it matters to the church. It matters to our world. I'll tell you right now, it matters to our world. When I say our world, I'm not just talking globally, although it certainly does, but like I always do, let's get right back into, into, the, into home. Your giving matters to your family. It matters. You see, if, if this area of our life is out of whack, it's like having one wheel on a car out of alignment and you're driving down the road and everything's shaking and, it's, and, and everybody in the family's like, hey, I think something's wrong with the car. And you're going, no, it's fine. Then you're in the middle of nowhere and the axle falls off. Didn't see it coming. This matters to your family. It matters to your neighbors and the communities that we live in and the opportunities that we have to express generosity to the world in which we live and to share God's love in the way that he wants us to. Because here's the truth. The truth is that God's generosity moves through people. God's generosity moves moves through people. This is just what he chooses to do. He uses the church. He uses the church to share his message of love. He's not writing it in the clouds. He uses people. When it comes to generosity and meeting needs, he uses people. We continue reading there. In verse 10, it says, Now, He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This is a pretty cool thing to be a part of. All right, so what he's saying here is, all right, we want, a, we want a big harvest, we gotta throw a lot of seeds. So if we're gonna, have, if we're gonna reap a, a big harvest, then we gotta plant a lot of seeds. So what he'll do is he'll keep giving you seed and he'll keep giving you bread. And when you're in this generosity flow, he's gonna provide everything that you need to enlarge the harvest of righteousness. Righteousness. Right living. And Right living is is ordained and set forth by the creator of life. He knows what is right and what we need and how we're designed and how we are to navigate the world in which we're living in. And he cares about it. And so the harvest of our righteousness, as we are giving what he's laid on our hearts to give, and we're experiencing this, then God's generosity moves through us to people and we'll be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through your generosity, it will result in thanksgiving to God. 
The ultimate result of, of your generosity and giving is that other people will be able to connect to God, to people, and then to the mission of Jesus. To who he is and what he's done and what he's promised to do. They'll be able to hear the message and meet Jesus. And they'll give thanks to God. And you will be a part of that. See, we don't just pray for one. We want to make a way for one. Yes, God, please move your love through me. But he's going to do it in really practical ways, too. And this results in thanksgiving to God. And so I want to encourage you to, to think abundantly. The scarcity mindset can, can go away. God's got it. He's a provider and he's a good father and we can trust him in this. There are enough resources to meet every need in the world. And God's plan is for the, those resources to move through people. People just like you. And it's tempting when you hear something like that to go, yeah, those rich people should do what God's telling them to do. How about we stop wasting energy on thinking about people who may have what we think is more than, than, than you might have or I might have. And we trust God with what we do have. And watch what he does. Because here's the thing. Let me tell you something about generous people. This is pretty cool. Generous people don't complain. They just don't. Because they're happy. Now, I believe generosity is inside everyone wanting to get out. But when that generosity has an expression and it's happening and they're, they're generous on every occasion and they're generous not only with money, but with grace and forgiveness and with words and with time. But it's all together. You pull any of them out and you know, now there's a stinginess that's happening. There's a scarcity mindset. I don't have enough. I can't trust God with this. I can't do it. And you just step into it. Yep. And be generous. You know what? Generous people don't complain. They don't sit around and go, well, those people shouldn't do that. No. And they didn't do this. And, you know, I wanted this. And this didn't happen for me. It's like they're too busy abounding in every good work. They're bounding. These aren't people who are trudging through life. Oh, I can't. They're bounding. They're like Tigger. T-I double G R. <laughs> Bouncing through the day. Doing anything for anybody, abounding in every good work. And so this is the truth. God's generosity moves through people. So believe it. Believe this. Giving is a gift from God. Giving is a gift from God. It's not a curse. That's why I, I'm done. I'm not interested in being like, guys, sorry we're talking about money. That's nonsense. Guys, we're talking about money. Of course we are, because you know what? It matters. And God's got a gift for you, and the gift is called giving, and giving is a gift, not a curse. But what we do is we, we, we think of it, we've bought into the lie, and we think, oh, that when God tells us to give, oh, he hates me. How dare you? Really? How, does, how do we reconcile all of this? How dare you, Savior of the world, who gave your one and only son, ask me to give some money? You're a jerk. It doesn't make any sense. You can't reconcile those thoughts. That's why we're so conflicted and so out of balance and so stirred up inside and so upset. This is a blessing. This is a gift from God. Verse 12 says, This service that you perform, the service of giving that you perform, is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but also is overflowing and many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity and sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Thank you, Lord. I want you to try it with me. Say, thank you, Lord. Now let's get real. Thank you, Lord, for telling me to give. Yeah, thank you, Lord, for telling me to give. Yeah. What a gift. He is for you, not against you. And giving is for you, not against you. 
This is what we know to be true and what we can believe. Let's not exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the creator who is to be forever praised. Amen. Amen. And so to remind us of what a generous God we have and that everything we have, we have received from him we get to share in communion together. And when we share in communion, we receive. We're saying yes to God's gift to us. And his gift is available to everyone. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, his gift is for you and available to you. Will you say yes to him? And if we're saying yes to Jesus, then let's say yes to everything he has for us. And so let's take the bread. Jesus was with his friends and he took bread and he broke it and he offered it to them. He said, this is my body, which is given for you. He wants us to receive, to take and eat. If you're saying yes to Jesus, then let's eat together. And he also took the cup. And he offered it to them to drink and made him a promise. He's like, this is a a new covenant to you. My blood, which is poured out for you, I'm going to do this for you. To make a way for you to be reconciled to the Father. To be made new. And so when we drink, we are receiving again, all over again, saying yes to Jesus. But not just yes to salvation, yes to everything he wants to give us. And so if you're saying yes to him, then let's drink to the king. As you spend some time in prayer, would you hear this great news from God? That he's for you and giving is for you. And will you trust him enough to ask him, God, show me what to give and give me courage to give it? Let's spend this time with him right now, God. Show us what to give and give us courage to give it. Let us receive everything you have for us because we don't want to miss out on any of it. God of creation, there at the start before the beginning of time. No point of reference You spoke to the dark And fleshed out the wonder of light And as you speak A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath The plan If the stars were made to worship, so will I I can see your heart in everything you've made Every burning star, a single fire of grace If creation sings your praises, so will I salvation you chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride on a hill you created the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die and as you speak Billion failures disappear Where you lost your life So I can find it here If you left the grave behind you So alive I can see your heart In everything you've 
done, Lord. Every part designed and work of art called love. If you gladly chose to surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a billion different ways. Every precious one, the child you died to save. If you gave your life to love, then so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind. That's true of us, Lord God. We are your people. We are praying for one person to share your love with. We pour out our praise. We surrender to you, Jesus, and all you are. Yes!
We heard some powerful things in today's message. Giving matters, and God's generosity moves through people, and giving is a gift from God. Hey, if you wanna give now, here are a few ways you can do that, and thank you so much for your continued generosity. Hey, thank you so much for helping us to reach the most people in the shortest time. Our YouTube channel is the way that we're continuing to do that. Head there now, make sure that you like, subscribe, and turn the notifications bell on to stay caught up with everything we have going on here at One Church. Go ahead and do that now. God's love for you is real, it's true, and it's deep, and I hope that you felt that today. We just want you to have a wonderful week. We're here every week. We hope that you come back and join us again. God bless you and have a great week.